Ghana means business brought to you by Goyle. Goyle, good energy. Ghana means business. Your story, our message. Welcome to your favorite television show, Totally Apolitical, Factual, Unbiased, and Well Researched. Ghana means business. Today, we have a question. And that question is, what has been the role of the Bank of Ghana and the Apex Bank in terms of supervision, intermediation, and ensuring the sustainability and profitability of all the rural and community banks in Ghana. Fortune has smiled at us. We have two of our own homegrown bankers, illustrious, capable, and achievers. We are going to listen to them. They are going to educate us. They are going to fill us with what really happens between the Apex Bank on the one hand and the Bank of Ghana and all the rural and community banks in Ghana. Gentlemen, you are welcome to the show once again. Thank, Thank you, you, Nana. Ghana means business. Your story, our message. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Go Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Go Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Ghana means business. Your story, our message. I'll start first with you, Mr. William Bunkita. Can you please share with us your experience, background, and perhaps some of your greatest achievements in the Rural Community Banking Administration. Thank you, Nana. I'm William Bonkinter, General Manager at the Rural Bank. I bring 21 years of experience into rural banking, and the Rural Bank particularly. Uh, I took over the bank as General Manager about 11 years ago, and uh, as at that time, the asset base of the bank was just about 3 million. Uh, it is about 27 million now. Wow. So uh, how many branches were you able to open? We, I opened two okay. in addition to the two. Okay. Um, we, have, we used to be operating with about 27, 32 staff. Okay. Now we are about 61 mm -mm. core staff. So you've literally doubled your operations. Yes. Yes, we, I took the bank uh, from a certain position to the number one best performing rural bank in Ghana. Wow, what year was it? A few years this? ago. Oh, a few years ago. Congratulations. And, uh, consistently, we stood a strong bank wow. to date. You have been in banking for how many years? For about 14 years. Impressive. Please share with us your background and some of your achievements during this lifespan of 14 years in the Rural Community Banking Administration. Thank you, Nana. Actually, by training or by profession, I'm actually an agriculturist. Oh, really? Yes, I, I had my first degree in agriculture from the Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology, after okay. which I had a practical training for about one year in commercial farm and export management. Okay. So I worked with commercial farms for about four years before joining rural banking, specifically uh, North Town Rural Bank, now oh, okay. Amuga Rural Bank. Yes. I joined as the principal project officer, and uh, in about a year, I became the acting operations manager, later the operations manager in 2008. Wow. That was a switch I had to do from 
uh, projects and credits to, to bank, core banking operations. So as you rightly said in your intro, I am actually uh, homegrown in rural Absolutely. banking. That is how I became a banker. Then uh, I was operations manager from 2008 to about 2016 when I became the acting general manager. Of Amuga Rural Bank. Exactly. Okay. And uh, in uh, 2017, June, I was uh, confirmed as the general manager. Uh, one of the biggest achievements I would want to talk about that I led a team so that the banks, like Amuga Rural Bank's operations became computerized. Wow. in 2012 okay. under the auspices of the ARBA Press Bank. That was like an almost impossible feat. So I remember when we went for the sensitization, somewhere 2008, uh, it, it looked like an insurmountable feat mm -hmm. uh, for us to do. And uh, the facilitator saw it. And at the point he had to make us sing, we are going. I remember that very much because that is what really gave us <laughs> that motivation that well we can do this exactly. and it was a very touching thing when on 30th January 2012 we went live wow. it was like a dream come true wow. your good deeds and your good work at Amuga propelled you to where you find yourself now as the general manager at thankful Amuga. to God that 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 is it that is great. so I moved to Anglo Rural Bank in November 2017 okay. and uh, the bank's deposit then was about 11 million mm -hmm. and uh, by the help of the whole team the board and management and the staff we've been able to move the bank to about 15 million deposit wow. even in these difficult times that uh, the financial sector was undergoing so much reform and customer confidence was really not that the best, true. but we were able to move our deposits that much. Excellent. Mr. William Bunkita, yes, please share with us some of the policy interventions under either the government or Bank of Ghana that you feel would change the landscape of rural and community banks in Ghana. Are there any particular challenges with policy that you think needs to be addressed in order for your operations to be better sustained and be on a stronger pedestal. Thank you, Nana. Uh, as an institution, uh, there certainly will be challenges for the operations of rural banks. One of the uh, policy issues that I would suggest for the government or Bank of Ghana to deal with is our corporate tax. Mm. We pay corporate tax of 25% to GRE. What was it before? Before the 25 percent, it was 8 percent. So a 300 percent increase sure. overnight. Sure. sure. Now, so how did that affect your uh, corporate and social responsibilities? Definitely, it will. It will shrink the budgets for uh, corporate social responsibilities. Which is very, very important sure. part of your role in the communities sure. that you mm -hmm. serve. Sure. Because the rural banks are actually also doing a lot and they used to do so in corporate social responsibilities construction of police stations you can mention a host of all of them so and they do this just because there was a space uh, that space of between eight percent and 25 percent so that would be an issue uh, i would suggest but why couldn't even the government have decided that okay you guys are paying a corporate tax of eight percent we want you to add an additional, what? What percentage? Eight minus, uh, 25, 25 minus eight is what, 17%. 17. So instead of paying 17% to us, allocate 17% of your profit to corporate and social responsibilities. Don't you think that would have been money that would have been better served directly to the communities that you so diligently provide these financial services to? Sure. It would have been, Nana. It would have been, and that would have been done through the consultative process, yes. which was uh, missing out. And now, uh, not that rural banks have, are shying away from corporate social responsibility because of the tax effect. They are still doing it. We are still doing a lot of corporate social, but we are not well capacitated as we used to do before. Much would have been done if the corporate tax was of a lesser rate than 25%. 
That's one of the issues. The other issue intervention I will suggest to the government or Bank of Ghana, if that were the case, is for Bank of Ghana to give us some soft loans, soft monies, for you uh, to, to unlearn to unlearn to the uh, communities into which uh, we are impacting. Because your quite cost a of lot. funds are quite high. They are quite high. They are quite high because we get we mobilize, do this microfinance business, and the cost of mobilizing through microfinance, mm -hmm. sending SUSU officers out to mobilize money is quite expensive. So when you mobilize from a very expensive source. It stands to reason that you have to lend it at, uh, at an expensive price. So uh, these two issues are quite critical for the future survival of rural banks. I totally mm -hmm. agree. Yes. Mr. Oday, Anna. on the issue of your obligations to the Bank of Ghana, what are some of your, in terms of fiduciary responsibilities as in reserves or amounts that you must maintain in order to meet the, requ the requ requirements or regulations of Bank of Ghana? And if there are any, first share with us what they are, as in maybe liquidity ratios or other ratios. And if they are, do they help you in terms of your business or do they rather challenge you in terms of your liquidity or your operations? Please share with us. Good. So, Nana, here's the issue. Regulation is very, very important, especially as deposit-taking institutions. And the Bank of Ghana has the responsibility of ensuring, first, that depositors' funds are safe. That's true. So that's why they have all these directives and regulations that they release. For example, in terms of capital requirements, the Bank of Ghana expects that, as rural banks, we should have capital adequacy ratio of not less than 10%. And also, it has a minimum stated capital requirement that we should have. What is, your, what is the minimum stated capital? That is capital? 1 million Ghana cities. 1 million Currently, Ghana cities. Currently, that is it. Yes. Now, even on that issue, why 1 million? Why not 800,000? Why not 900,000? Why not 1.2 million? What is so magical about a figure of 1 million? Is that grounds for closing down my bank? Well, the issue about capital must be looked at from this angle. We don't operate in isolation. There are international standards that the Bank of Ghana has to ensure that we meet. Mm -hmm. So as you've said, somebody may determine that I really don't need that amount of capital. But the experience over time has re really taught us that if the capital is not adequate, it's not enough to some level, it becomes difficult for the rural banks to be able to operate. Rural banks are also growing. And as you grow, if your capital doesn't grow, it becomes difficult for you to be able to take on some businesses that are also growing. Mm -hmm. And so definitely the 1 million Ghana cities has been uh, in force for some number of years now. We don't know when the Bank of Ghana will raise it. But experience has shown that that is something that is adequate or it's is, is, is OK for us to be able to maintain that and continue to do our businesses. OK. Now on the issue of ratios and requirements Reserves, based yeah. on policy, what are some of the requirements that you need to meet? Is okay. it monthly or quarterly? Yeah, so we have to submit uh, prudential returns, okay. as we call it. And these are things that Bank of Ghana uses to monitor operations, to see how, we are, how safely we are operating. And as I said before, there are international standards that we must meet. So we send weekly, we send monthly, we send quarterly, half yearly, annual returns to the Bank of Ghana. And we have to meet some minimum ratios in this. For example, liquidity ratios are prescribed. A primary liquidity of 8%. We have, because of our nature and because of ERB, Pest Bank, we are required to keep also 5% mm -hmm. of our deposits in, uh, with ERB, Pest Bank as another form of reserve. And then, of course, we are also to keep about 30% at least in secondary reserve, government treasury bills, bonds, and other placements. This will end us some funds and will help us to be able to at least uh, cover our cost of funds. So some of these ratios are very important. They help us to I safety. understand that. The question that I'm leading to is the same Bank of Ghana, I'm sure, had these same ratios for the savings and loans and the finance houses and also microfinance institutions. Yet, with all the prudential requirements and the controls, 
the Bank of Ghana had to revoke the licenses of 23 savings and loans and finance houses and 347 uh, microfinance institutions. And then subsequently, the Securities and Exchange Commission has also pulled the licenses of 54 fund managers. Why is it that the same Bank of Ghana performing its oversight responsibility had to revoke the licenses of almost 450 financial institutions and yet not a single rural and community bank had their license revoked? What were you guys doing so differently that made you stand out? Now that is where the role of ARB Press Bank Limited comes in. Okay. So for us, we have a two-tier type of regulation. So we have the ARB Press Bank not only serving as a service provider, as banking and non-banking service, but they also play a supervisory role. All the returns I mentioned, we submit them to the ARB Press Bank and more. And the ARB Press Bank also comes in with their own inspection. Their focus is mainly to ensure that the rural banks are safe and robust as our motto goes together for progress yes. so the rba press bank also comes in with advice on the sports and as and when needed so that we can operate safely within the limits of the rules and directives that the bank of ghana says not surprising therefore that when the cleanup happened between 2017 and 2019 not even one rural bank was closed down or license was withdrawn. And in the 16th August 2019 press release by Bank of yes. Ghana, they mentioned the rural and community banks good. And they specifically mentioned the role that they will be letting the ARB press bank play so that they can ensure that the rural banks are safe and sound and to be able to deliver financial intermediation to uh, customers and the public in the rural settings. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goyle Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goyle Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Ghana means business. Your story, our message. Mr. Bunkita, on the same issue, please share with us, in your opinion, as a professional banker, the interventions that the ARB Apex Bank has made in the rural and community banks that you feel has sustained your operations, ensured your survivability, and today, when we boast about banking, our traditional bankers, our own bankers, the rural and community banks, stand head and shoulders above the rest of the people and institutions in the banking community. Share some of your views with us, please. Thank you, Nana. The ARB APS Bank was established purposely to serve the rural and community banks. Okay. And the bank, ARB APS Bank, has done so well over the years. One of them is a compactorization exercise that uh, general manager of AMLO mentioned. We actually do not have the capacity as individual rural banks to have undertaken such a huge exercise, but critical to, because you cannot do without computerization. Exactly. And not with a, the, a, a even your, your growth, your growth alone. Your operations must be supported growth. by computerization. And so that is a very critical uh, intervention that the ARB, collaborating with MIDA, actually brought on the growth and sustainability of rural banks. And thankfully, these days, the rural banks can also compete with some of the financial services providers, such as the universal banks, in terms of 
e-banking, okay. in terms of the ATMs, in terms of even common SMS uh, to our clients. Uh, additionally, the ARB APS Bank, as he mentioned, also supervises the rural banks. And uh, from the, uh, his submission, you will notice that it is as a result of the supervisory work of also the ARB APS Bank that the rural banks uh, uh, were not touched. They didn't have any reason to revoke any rural I banks. Think, I, thought, I think even one or two had a run Yes. of the rural bank, yes. but yet they were able to survive. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Apex came so in. So Apex came in. Yes. Was yes. To support because Apex will never allow any rural bank to go down. Wow. To go down in terms of the species supply, to go down in terms of the supervisory services, the corrective actions, and then all of that. Apart from that, the ARB Apex Bank has actually made the rural banks to be recognized True. You see, as an institution that can deliver correct financial services Absolutely. to our clients. Absolutely. Individually, the names were around, but they were not mentioned. But with the ARB Pest Bank, the, uh, the bank is passing through various channels of social media, including our own rural banker. Yes. An exceptional piece. Your, your magazine, incredible, yes. Yes. very impressive. Yes, even your website. And, and so the confidence level yes. for the rural banks, uh, or created for our customers, has also increased. True. And all that is coming from the intervention, including of the ARB your APS own bank. homegrown Ghana means business, sure. which sure. I'm privileged. Exactly. exactly. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mention that. Don't very worry. Critical for <laughs> if us. the horses do not come, you know, Mohammed will definitely <laughs> come down. Yes. So the, 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 the interventions made by the ARB APS Bank are really enormous on the existence of uh, the rural banks, and surely so because uh, it was established to serve, to bring us up, to ensure that the services we render to the rural folks, to grow the rural communities, are critical and they are relevant to our people. And that is precisely what they are doing. There are a host of uh, uh, them that we cannot mention all here. For customers, small, medium, and micro companies out there who still view a rural bank as a, a traditional bank that has no place for him to put his money, you are on Ghana means business. Tell Ghanaians why they must patronize the rural and community banks in Ghana, why they should put their money in your safe and capable hands. To the general public and our customers, what I'll tell them is that time has told the whole story that rural banks came, we are here, and we'll continue to be here to serve them. We want to assure them that we are aware of the circumstances that they are in. We are with them, they are customers, they are neighbors, they know our houses, and we don't only deal with them at the banking halls. We come to them, and they also have the chance to be meters at our homes and in other places. The rural and community banks, under the auspices of the ARB APS Bank, will continue to provide financial intermediation and cut, using cutting edge technology that other banks or commercial banks are using. We are also there. And the customers will attest to the fact that we, the ARB APS Bank has brought on several platforms electronically that is helping us to live, deliver financial uh, interventions. Also, the Bank of Ghana has declared that the financial sector cleanup ended in August 2019. And the rural banks, all of them, were safe. And the Bank of Ghana even declared later, when people had doubts, that they should continue to do business with the rural banks because the rural banks are safe. I think that is a very good thing to say and we want to continue to ensure our customers to rely on us for good services going forward. Thank you so much. My brother, for those of us who think that only the southern part of Ghana has the singular opportunity of economic growth and development, who don't see the northern part of Ghana as a place of incredible economic possibility, great potential, untapped resources. Share with us why I must take my money from Kumase 
and bring it to the borders of Boko, to Nandom, to Garu, to Hamile, all the way to my other friends' hometowns in Navrongo and Bupe. Why must I move my money down to, uh, up north? Thank you, Nana. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, there are a lot of both natural and human resources in the northern sector of this, our great country. Probably we don't know that cocoa can do very well in northern Ghana. Cocoa? Yes. Mm. We probably don't know. And you have but large tracts of land. Cocoa can do very well in northern Ghana. And as I said, I have two cocoa trees in my own yard. You have large tracts of land, arable land, that you can grow all the commercial crops, rice, maize, and all of those that you can mention. Including tubers, yes. legumes, um, yes. granules, yes. beans, yes. yams. There are a few mineral deposits across the whole of the northern Ghana. Mineral deposits? Nana. And there are currently investors who are trying to extract gold. Some of them, uh, uh, Nadom Rural Bank is in a relationship with one of them, and they have projected 25 years of mineral ex a gold extension hmm. in the uh, Babili area, that is uh, Laura District, Laura Municipal Assembly. If you go also to Upper East, there are gold deposits there that they are doing. If you go to the uh, northern region, you will come across a very vast piece of land running all the way after you exit Kintampo to Tamale, both sides. It is very suitable for investors in all forms. So the north is no longer to be construed as a place of poverty. The resources are there. It is just that they are not tapped or they are not well coordinated for us to get optimum benefits from them. Has the rural and community banks come to stay? Can Ghanaians all over, even those outside Ghana, use the rural and community banks based on the technology that you have to transfer money both inland and from external sources? Have we reached the level that we can say that as a rural bank, we can wash shoulders and provide almost all the services that any universal bank can provide. What is your message to viewers this morning? Please share with us. Yeah. Now, what I'll tell viewers this morning is that rural banking has come of age. And uh, as you mentioned, we are able to receive transfers from overseas. And through ARBA Pest Bank, we are able to do transfers to overseas also. And so we invite all to patronage services, banking services, financial services of all forms, both domestic and foreign, through uh, rural banks, rural and community banks, with over 800 banking halls wow. in all the 16 regions in Ghana. We have the largest network of branches. So we invite you, go to the next rural bank, go to their website, contact them by phone, and we are there to support you and offer you the services that you need. Folks, you cannot call yourself a Ghanaian if you don't have a, an account with a rural and community bank. You cannot say safely and proudly that your money is safe because with all the supervision we all saw what happened during the banking sector reforms of 2019. And not a single, not even one, rural and community bank failed. At the end of the day, they are all standing taller, more sustainable, and fresher than ever. For me, it has been like a breath of fresh air. Listening to Ghana's finest, our traditional bankers, our own homegrown rural and community banks. I am your host, Nana Fridia Ajimai.
humble. Gentlemen, it has been a rare privilege. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you also for the opportunity.